So they started listening a little more, but still they wasn't ready to do nothing. Yeah, it's, just, it's making sense. It's making sense. They start, you know, they start listening, but they kind of was moving slow. I didn't actually see God light a fire on them. <laughs> Boy, they start running. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, what did you say? Okay, I'm ready now. Come. To, they start doing everything. Where they, they was just like it. Yeah, I see it now. It's starting to make sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I seen God like that fire. They start running and start doing this. Well, they start trying to do everything, make up for stuff. <laughs> Why? Because they got that main ingredient that you need, and that is fear. God know what it takes for you to do his will. That's how man is. Man operates out of fear. Even with other men, I didn't show that. Got all kinds of examples of that. But now, Acts the ninth chapter. Acts the ninth chapter. Acts the ninth chapter. So we're going to see how the New Testament church was operating. Once it was flourishing. It was flourishing here by this time. Thousands was being converted daily. So by the time you got here, it was flourishing. Acts the ninth chapter. Let's see if they had converted everything over to love, like the preacher out in L.A. say. He said, replace fear with love. You ain't got to fear, just love. Look, the title of this lesson is, you cannot love God. Unless you fear him first. Acts 9 and verse 31. Go ahead. Then had the churches rest through all Judea. Uh -huh. And Galilee. Uh -huh. And Samaria. Go ahead. And were edified. Doing what? And walking in the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. And in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. See this is really after Paul got converted. Because Paul had them all shook up. He was had him killed, he had Stephen killed. He was holding the coach when the people killed Stephen. And he was going, having people locked up. But once he got converted, that was some rest. So it said, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. Again, that's what will produce love in you when you get the proper fear. We saw at the beginning, the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. If you don't have enough sense to fear God, you don't have no wisdom when it comes to God. So that's what they were doing. This is the New Testament now, so you can't make it an Old Testament thing. It said walking in, the, the church was walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy So it's even mentioned the Holy Ghost here. People want to take the Holy Ghost and erase everything else. Where it's mentioned in the Holy Ghost, but it's also mentioned in walking in fear. So the Holy Ghost don't do away with fear, do it? They got them both in the same verse. Walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost will multiply. On another note, just like you got this foolish Israelite out in New York, wherever he at, talking about he the comforter, he the Holy Ghost. Foolishness. So he got some boys running around talking about that. So I asked him, I said, well, you the Holy, you the comforter, you the Holy Ghost, well, was that you back here in Acts the ninth chapter? Well, surely, well, of course that wasn't him. Well, he ain't the Holy Ghost then. He's not the comforter. Cut and dry. It said, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Lord. So the Holy Ghost was on the job back here. He didn't just start in whenever he come on the scene, 1999. Y'all have seen this because he was on, I think he was on Donahue or Jerry Springer's show arguing with some people. He got a little notoriety and he done lost his mind. But now, go to uh, John, the 14th chapter. John 14. We're going to wrap it up. John 14. Let's see what Jesus himself said when it comes to love. Because people want to use love, but throw out doing anything. Oh, we ain't got to do that because of love. We ain't got to fear because of love. Let's see what Jesus said love is all about. John 14. 
And we're going to pick it up. We're going to skip a little bit. Verse 15 is where we're going to start at. John 14 and verse 15. John 14 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now that's pretty clear. You don't have to even try to figure out what Jesus is saying. Like I said, the verses that people twist, you got to really do some work to make something else out of them because they kind of confuse anyway. The couple of verses that they use are Paul's writings. Even though he didn't say nothing wrong, you could manipulate some of it if that's what you want to do. But now you can't make nothing else out of this. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So love requires some action. That's why the title is, you can't love God unless you fear him first. You can't walk around, you can say you love him, but you can't truly love him until you fear him because you're going to start to know how dangerous he is and start to change your life accordingly. Mm -hmm. But now skip down to verse 21 and read that. He that have my commandments and keep it them, uh -huh. he it is that loveth me. Oh, see, he that have my commandments and keep it them. It's all about doing something. And what will make you get his commandments and keep them? Fear will. Other than that, you don't have no incentive. If I didn't fear God, I wouldn't even be here today, I'm going to tell you. There's a whole lot of other stuff that I used to do that I still could be doing that was enjoyable in the world. But not that I don't like doing this, but hey, that was some fun too. So, but what made me start doing this is fearing God. Start keeping the Sabbath. That's what made me start doing Knowing that, hey, God was going to do something. See, I didn't even care. I didn't even care when I was figuring out, when I was finding out about the word, and I was figuring out that, look, God is saying that he going to give you this, this, and this for doing right. Oh, he going to bless you. He going to give you this. That didn't move me as much as the fear. I could have I said, well, I'll forego the good stuff, God. I'll forego that. I'm just going to have me some fun now. You know, I'm going to keep fornicating, doing all the stuff I've been doing. And I, if I don't get no good stuff, you know, hey, I never had it. I ain't going to miss it. But when I looked at the flip side of that, that God said, no, nah, but if you don't get the good stuff, it's some bad stuff. And it's going to hurt forever. That's, I'm telling you, that's the only thing. That's what moved me. Other than that, I still would have been where I was at. But when I started to get a little fear, I said, well, God is not playing, is he? He's going to do some damage. That's when I started to get it together. I said, wait a minute. This is serious business. But it was all because of fear. Because that is the, incentive, the, the ingredient that, that we're missing nowadays. So he said here, verse 21, He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. That's the one that loves them. You can say you love them, but if you don't obey them, you don't. And finish 21. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Uh -huh. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Okay. Now, that's if you love him, he going to reveal the father to you and both of them going to love you. But now on the other hand, that's predicated on you keeping his command. But on the other hand, what if you don't? See, the title is you can't love God unless you fear him. So what if you don't fear him and keep his commandments? What did he say about that? 24. He that loving me not, keeping not my saying. See, you don't love him. You can say you love him. No, the Bible tell you that. The Bible says in uh, 1 John 2 that people say they know him. He that said he know God and keep it not his commandments is a lie and the truth is not in him. See, you really don't know him. He said, he that loveth me not, how do he know it? He keepeth not my sins. Go ahead. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the fathers which sent me. See, some people don't understand that the Messiah was started in the old day. But even if you don't understand that, he said the word that he's telling you about is the fathers too. So even if you thought that the father actually gave the commandments in the old day, he's telling you you better follow him right here. But now go to uh, 1 John 5. And we got a couple of more after this. 
1 John, the fifth chapter. First John five We're gonna pick it up at verse one. First John five and verse one. Okay, go ahead. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Uh -huh. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Okay. Now, some people want to, would, would, would take this and run with it. All you got to do is believe. But James tells you, if you believe, faith without works is dead. You're going to do some works to back it up. So he said, believe Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that has begotten of him. Just like he said, the greatest two commandments is loving God and loving your neighbor. It's a package deal. Mm-hmm. So if you love God, you also going to love your neighbor as yourself. And that don't do away with the other commandments. The other commandments hinge on those two greatest commandments. Paul lets you know. He said, if you owe no man anything but to love another, he that loveth hath fulfilled the law. So people say, well, see, that do away with the commandments. No, he said, for this you won't steal, kill. He started naming the commandments because that's what love is. And what will make you keep those commandments or operate in love? It will be fear. It will be fear. That's why people, you get people that burglarize houses, right? You know, burglars kind of scary anyway. They, they not like stick up men. They a little scary. So that's why they break in houses. They don't want no confrontation. Why? Because they scared. They don't, don't want, they don't want the person to be home. And that's why they break in the house. Somebody there, they are scared. So they operating out of what God wants us all to operate out of. That is fear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. Uh -huh. When we love God and keep his commands. See, he said, by this we know that we love the children of God. This is proof in the pudding. When we do what? Love God and keep his commands. How are you going to get away from keeping God's commandments? And you're going to erase it with love, and he's telling you this is really what love is. Somebody is mistaken. You get churches tomorrow are going to be talking about love, 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 but the commandment's out the back door. Fear out the back door. Somebody's mistaken. This is how we know we, didn't Jesus say, if you love me, keep my commandments? Well, he said, John said, by this we know that we love the children of God. This is the proof. When we love God and keep his commandments. Now, you've had people over the years, one of their answers to keeping God's commandments is that they're too hard. Oh, you can't keep them commandments. And they even quote how many commandments. Oh, don't you know it's 613 commandments? You can't keep all those commandments. And they try to even quote James too, where James said, if you break one, you break them all. So they try to say, see, you can't keep them because if you break one, you break them all. So James wasn't saying, well, if you break one, you break them all. So we might as well just break them all then. He wasn't saying that. James was telling you, look, be careful not to break one. That's what James was telling you in James 2. See, they twist that, though. They make it like James is saying, look, since you can't keep them all, ain't no sense in keeping none of them. That's not what James was saying. If that's the case, you know, we all just do what we want to do. And we tell people that. A guy was telling me, well, see, you ain't got to keep the law. You just saved by grace. And I said, so I can sleep with your wife then. Went, well... He didn't even want to say, I couldn't do it. He started backing up. He said, well, you really wouldn't want to if you say. I said, no, what if I wanted to, though? I'm still saying, right? Well, <laughs> that don't make no sense. Either it's wrong or it's not. Either it's sin or it's not. Sin is breaking the law. So verse 2, he said, for this we know that we... By this we know that we love the children of God when we do what? Love God and keep his commandments.